First myth is that we don't know when human life begins. You see articles like this that act as if the pro-life side is being really simplistic and reductive about a very nuanced, complicated issue. And they act as if we're trying to just be black and white and we don't really understand the very complicated biology here. And before I explain why this is a myth, I want to make a very important distinction. When I talk about when a human life begins, am I talking about in terms of biology or philosophy? Am I talking about when does an organism start or am I talking about when is a human life morally relevant? This is a very important distinction that people on both sides of the debate fail to make all the time and so I'm going to spend a minute explaining it. The pro-life view very vaguely in a nutshell is that the human zygote or embryo or fetus is a human organism. We argue that all human organisms are morally relevant, that is they have value, they're worth protecting, some would say that's what you call people. It's generally immoral to kill people, so abortion is generally immoral. There's your premise, 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 conclusion. But it's really important to understand that these are not all the same type of claim. The first one is a scientific claim. It is a fact that the human fetus is a human organism. But the second two are philosophical claims. Science cannot tell you who is or isn't morally relevant. Science can't tell you what is or is not a morally good action to take. Those are arguments based on philosophy and your religious views and your ethical point of view. And we can have that debate, and it's a very important debate. But first we have to recognize that these are different debates. And this matters because what I see happen all the time, on our side as well as theirs, is the pro-life person will just skip the middle part. And they'll just say, science says life starts at conception, so abortion is wrong. And what you're doing there is kind of wrapping everything into one sentence and it's a little confusing. So, for example, let's say you're having coffee with your pro-choice friend and for some reason they ask you why you're against abortion and so you say, well, life begins at conception. And maybe what you mean is in terms of biology, the first stage of our life cycle as an organism is, is a zygote, starts at conception. But they hear people begin at conception. They think you mean valuable human life worth protecting, which you do, but that's like an additional argument. They think you're saying people begin at conception. And so they might respond, well, science can't say when life begins. But they mean science can't do philosophy's job. Science can't say when an organism is morally relevant. But you hear, they don't understand biology. Of course science can say when life begins. And it's just a miscommunication. It's just a lack of clarity in the conversation, but it wastes a lot of time. The reason I'm spending so much time explaining this distinction, biology versus philosophy, and how it's a miscommunication and it's an innocent mistake, that's not this. These are not innocent mistakes. These articles, which are in your sources handout, they are claiming that in terms of biology specifically, not philosophy, biology, we're wrong. They're not saying, yes, of course, we all begin as zygotes, but philosophically, why does that matter? They're saying, we don't understand science. Every single one of these articles is talking about touting scientific credentials and then claiming we have the biology wrong. And I don't have time to go through all of them, but I'll give you an example. This article came out during the last election cycle, and the author, Scott Gilbert, was really irritated because Republicans kept saying things like, life begins at conception. And so in this article, he says... As an embryologist and the author of embryological textbooks, I can say with absolute assurance there is no consensus among embryologists as to when an individual human life begins. And I want you to notice two things about this quote. First, he's touting scientific credentials. As an embryologist, no consensus among embryologists. So it's possible that he means there's no consensus as to when philosophically valuable life begins, but then why is he talking about being an embryologist? Nobody goes to embryologists to ask what they think of philosophy. It's not their job. He's touting scientific credentials here. And it's important, and I bolded it, he says individual human life. And the reason that's important is because a lot of times when I have this conversation about when life begins, people will say, well, life is a continuum. There's no beginning or end. It goes in cycles, and you can trace us back through evolution, back to when our atoms came from stardust. That's cool. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about individual... It goes in cycles, and the beginning of each one of those cycles is the zygote. But he's not even saying that. He's saying in terms of an individual human life, we still don't know when it starts. He's making a very strong claim. And if you read this article, he argues that embryologists, not just everyday people, but specifically embryologists, have sort of five different possible points of view on when life begins in terms of biology. 
The first one is, of course, conception, and he acknowledges that there are a lot of people in the sciences who say life begins at conception. He cites a bunch of them, including a pro-choice geneticist and other people. Okay, so he's like, yes, that is one possible view. He's not ignoring it. The next one he says is gastrulation, which is um, when the embryo has gotten to the point where it can no longer twin. It's individualized. It can't become monozygotic twins, and so maybe you could argue only now do you have an individual. Now, who does he cite that says gastrulation is the beginning of life? He cites one person, and the quote doesn't actually support what he's saying. The person says, it is not birth, marriage, or death, but gastrulation, which is the most important time in your life. So even the person he cites doesn't say that's the beginning of your life in terms of biology. You just say gastrulation is really important. That's all he has for that one. Then he says that some embryologists think your life doesn't start until human-specific EEG waves. He cites nobody. Then he says some embryologists, in terms of embryology, say that human life doesn't begin until birth. And he cites nobody, because nobody says that. And then he says that some people say, I don't want to answer this question because you're just trying to trick me into explaining when the soul enters the body, which is totally presumptuous. But the point is, even in his own article, when you actually read it, and he claims there's no consensus and it's really confusing, actually what he says is a whole lot of people say conception, one person kind of not really says gastrulation, and one person says they don't want to talk about it. But it gets much worse than that. So he is the author of embryological textbooks. This is one of them, Developmental Biology 6th Edition. And in this book, the same person, Scott Gilbert, says, when we consider a dog, for instance, we usually picture an adult. But the dog is a dog from the moment of fertilization of a dog egg by a dog sperm. It remains a dog even as a senescent dying hound. Therefore, the dog is actually the entire life cycle of the animal from fertilization through death. In a more recent version of the same book, he has a chapter called Fertilization, the Beginning of a New Organism. And he says fertilization accomplishes two separate ends, sex, the combining of genes derived from two parents, and reproduction, the generation of a new organism. So when Scott Gilbert is writing scientific texts, he says that fertilization generates a new organism, and individuals are individuals from fertilization through death. And if you read these books, which I own and have looked at, he doesn't say, I'm asserting one view, but embryologists are really divided about this, and you should be aware of these other perspectives. You know why he doesn't say that? Because they're not divided about this. Not in terms of the science. It's very likely true that embryologists are divided in terms of their political opinions. I have no doubt. But that's not what we're asking them, is it? I didn't ask for your political opinion. I asked what the biology says. And it's not just his own textbooks that contradict his political opinions. It's countless textbooks. Th this is by no means an exhaustive list. These are just examples. They're all in the sources handout. And the sources handout includes the quotes from each one that says the mammalian life cycle or the human life cycle begins with the zygote, or they'll say with conception or fertilization. But same idea. And these are, these are written by different people over the course of decades. This is not new information and it's not anti-choice propaganda. This is basic biology and it's been known for a very long time. And I want to point out too, while I'm talking about this, <clears throat> when you step outside the abortion debate, this is not a controversial idea. The idea that we begin as zygotes is readily accepted in biology when we're not specifically talking about abortion. So here's a couple examples. This is my daughter's um, ABCs of Science board book. And I couldn't help but notice that Z is for zygote, the first stage of developmental, the first developmental stage for living things. And obviously a children's board book isn't like peer-reviewed research that you could cite as an authority. I'm just saying, in terms of sort of colloquial understanding of this, it's, it's readily accepted. Here's another example. If you've never seen the YouTube channel Crash Course, I strongly recommend it. And one of their series is on biology, and this particular video is on meiosis, sexual reproduction. And the speaker, Hank Green, says, if you're not suitably impressed by the fact that we all come from one single cell, and then we become this, the just... I don't know how to impress you. And here's a picture I took in late 2018 when my husband and I went to Chicago to the Museum of Science and Industry, and they have an entire section on fetal development, and outside of that section they have a plaque that says, all of us start as a single cell and then begin a wondrous journey of change in and with our moms. So when we're teaching biology and when we're talking about biology, not politics, this is just readily accepted. It's not a big deal. But suddenly when we walk into the abortion debate, I say the same thing, and people claim I am pushing my religious beliefs on them. They don't know I'm an atheist when they say that, but, but that's what they say. And recently, lest that not be enough, 
all the embryology and biology textbooks and all the colloquial examples. Um, just in late 2018, out of the University of Chicago, this guy Steve Jacobs did a dissertation on this. He noticed when he was having discussions about abortion that same conflation that I was talking to you about before. Are we talking about biology or philosophy? How come all these conversations go nowhere? And so he surveyed um, Americans on this question. He surveyed about 2,900 American adults and he asked them, do you think this is an important question? And 87% said yes, specifically in terms of the abortion debate. Is this an important question? When does human life begin in terms of the abortion debate? And the vast majority are like, yes, it's an important question. And then he said, well, do you think that we deserve to know the answer for making decisions about our reproductive health, i.e., if you're going to get an abortion or not, or other decisions too? And 84% said, yeah, we deserve to know the answer to this important question in terms of the abortion debate and in terms of our reproductive decisions. So then he said, okay, and this is the important part because he's trying to figure out do they mean biology or philosophy? Who do you think would be the best authority to answer this question? And he gave them multiple options. He said you could pick the Supreme Court, voters, philosophers, religious leaders, or biologists. Because he's trying to find out, like, if you think this is a philosophical question, presumably you will pick philosophers or religious leaders to help you decide when is human life valuable. In fact, in Roe v. Wade, when the Supreme Court gave their infamous decision, they talked about how religious leaders over the centuries have had different ideas about this. So he asked them, and the overwhelming majority said, biologists. They said this is an important question that's relevant to the abortion debate and biologists are the ones to answer it. So he said, okay, well then I will ask biologists. So he surveyed 5,500 biologists over 1,000 academic institutions around the world and it's important to note that in this group, 63% were non-religious, 85% described themselves as pro-choice and over 95% held PhDs. And the reason I bring this up is because you can't possibly argue that the group that he was surveying was going to be biased for our position. So what he did was he gave them three statements and said, rate these as correct or incorrect. First statement, the end product of mammalian fertilization is a fertilized egg, zygote, a new mammalian organism in the first stage of its species life cycle with its species genome. And 91% said this is correct. Second statement, the development of a mammal begins with fertilization, a process by which the spermatozoan from the male and the oocyte from the female unite to give rise to a new organism, the zygote. And 88% said, yeah, that's correct. Now, he called these his implicit statements because they're, they're worded in a very technical, scientific way. We're just talking about science. We're not talking about anything else. But to sort of test where the breakdown happens, he created what I'm going to show you in a second, what he called his explicit statement, where he worded it a little bit differently, a little bit more um, casually, maybe. And he purposely did it this way to see if it started to trigger their philosophical and political sensibilities. Even though he's asking them as biologists about biology, he's trying to see where the breakdown happens. So his explicit statement said, in developmental biology, so he's still talking about biology, fertilization marks the beginning of a human's life. You see how that's more direct. And he said, since the process produces an organism with a human genome that has begun to develop in the first stage of the human's life cycle. And here, 75% said this is correct. Two things to notice. The number went down. Less people, less biologists, fewer biologists said that this was correct. And he believes, Jacobs believes, it's because he phrased it differently and now they're starting to think about the abortion debate or other bioethical issues. The second thing to notice is still the vast majority said it was correct. And this is from a mostly non-religious pro-choice group of biologists. And they still said, yes, the beginning of a human's life is fertilization. So then he broke down their answer by their political persuasion. This is their own descriptions of themselves. And not very surprising, the more pro-choice they were, the less likely they were to agree that a human life begins at fertilization. But even with that being the case, even the biologists who said that they were very pro-choice, by a huge margin, agreed that a human's life begins at fertilization. And if you count all the biologists, regardless of their political position, the margin went much, much higher. In other words, you see these articles trying to call us anti-science and ignorant and reductive, but these don't hold any weight compared to decades of biological and embryological knowledge and text and the consensus of biologists internationally. So if you are having these conversations and people are pushing back on this, be confident. We are correct about this. I'm not saying this settles the entire debate because the philosophical parts still matter a great deal. You still have to talk about fetal value and personhood. That's important. But 
Before you can talk about that, we have to agree about what we're talking about, and we are talking about a human organism. We are talking about biologically a human being. Whether you think that matters or not, important conversation, but we are, we are right about the biology. That's the first myth. Oh, thank you. <clears throat>